Most people don't know that Day of the Dead is not about death. Day of the Dead is about life and celebrating the life that our loved ones shared with us. And it's an opportunity for us to commune with the people who were important to us that are no longer here physically, but they certainly are spiritually. An ofrenda basically, if you literally translate it, is an offering. And we're offering our loved ones an invitation to come visit with us, spend time with us, and remember them. So the ofrenda is part of the altar, and what we put on there is what they liked and what they were like. So for example, uh, we have food over here. We want to invite them to sit down with us and share a meal. We also are going to have some water for them because it's, uh, the journey from the uh, other side is very long and tiresome. We also have cempasuchil that represents earth. We use it because it, it represents the sun. So it's the light that guides our loved ones back to us. They don't have the good fortune of having Google Maps. So what we do, my family and I, is that we will go to the cemetery where my parents are buried and we will leave a trail of petals from the, from the cemetery all the way to our home. And we also have figures that represent what they did for a living. For example, if your loved one was a musician, you might want to use something like this. But also very important to us and to the Aztecs was not so much what you did in life, but how you died. And so, if you were a soldier and you died in battle, that was the epitome. That was the maximum thing that you could do. And you could come back as a butterfly. At the same level of, of warriors were women who died at childbirth. If you died at childbirth, you were given the same respect, the same place of honor as a soldier. She was uh, waitressing. She lost control of her car and hit a pole and hit two trees and it burst into flames. So there was, it was a very fiery accident. And uh, she's a beautiful girl inside and out. These are all things that she enjoyed, so that's what we put on the altar for her for today. We love our family members. It doesn't matter whether they're dead or not. Just because they're dead doesn't mean we don't still love them. My husband's family says, oh, we're getting together next week to celebrate Daddy Bernal's 100th birthday. And I go, Daddy Bernal, you mean like the father of all these elderly people? Didn't he die like 30 years ago? And they go, yes, but Tuesday would have been his 100th birthday, so it's worth celebrating. some bread, not the kind of bread you make sandwiches with, bread for the dead. People always say, well, it's to honor the dead and, you know, their spirits and they're still with us. No, 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 no. If you don't remember them, they get really upset and they come back and haunt you. I mean, they'll come destroy your house, cause problems, divorces, affairs, real drama, real telenovela. You remember them with what they liked the most. My brother, for example, he got killed in 89 in Austin, Texas, and my mom puts flowers on his you know, tombstone, little Valentine gifts, you know, Halloween things, Thanksgiving stuff. For every holiday, he gets a little gifts on his tombstone. And in fact, you go to my parents' house, when you enter the house, there's a picture of him protecting the house from all the evil. In fact, you go to my house in Austin, my parents' house, they don't lock their doors. No doors locked, not the front, not the back, not the garage, nothing's locked. Because my brother, Roger, protects the house, okay, from the living, because he's one of the dead ones.
Al pasar por el panteón, me encontré un calaverón. Fresco y oloroso. Al que buen árbol se rima. Buena sombra le cobija. Ponle su gorrito al No te arrugues, cuero viejo. Que te quiero, por favor. ¡Ay, hola! ¡Bienvenidos! ¿Cómo están? ¡Pasen! Amla Calandria, Rita Vidaurri. I traveled a lot. That's me with my guitar. And I used to sing at XCW Mexico City. That's the biggest radio station in Mexico City. I sing rancheras and boleros. Well, I sing everything, but I married my manager. That was Mr. Eden, Hillman Edward Eden, sir. He's the one that put me away not to sing no more, but it was because he was jealous. That's when I had that picture from the Jack Spear, and everybody was after me. But he died in 1964, and I had to work and I told my children I won't get married no more. I'm gonna dedicate my life for you all and you all have to help me. So they all helped working, throwing paper, watching ditches, but I had good sons, thank God. Bueno, este es un altar que yo siempre preparo para mis muertitos. Entre mi hija y yo preparamos esto. Es mi única hija que tengo porque ya se me murieron mis tres hijos. Y aquí están los tres, Lío, Rogelio y Eduardo. Y este es mi esposo, que en paz descanse, que era muy noviero. <laughs> you know, when they were little, when they were young, they all lived here in this house. I had a piano for them to practice, and they didn't want to. And I would sit and start tan 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 tan, and they said, "Oh no, <laughs> there's mom again." My darlings, they're always with me. You know, I used to cry a lot and smoke. I would sit here and cry and cry and cry. And some ladies from church would come and pray, and one of them told me, "Rita, don't cry no more." Let them rest in peace because God lends us our children and he takes them when he wants them. But go outside and look at the sky and when you see three stars, those are your children lighting on you. Whenever you sing, look up and I always do. Pienso yo que mis hijos les gustaría oír mi voz allá en el cielo que todavía su madre puede cantar. Voy a traer mi guitarra. I, I have to look for a key. Good. I haven't played in ages. De la Sierra Morena, cielito lindo, Vienen bajando un par de ojitos negros, cielito lindo de contrabando. Ese lunar que tienes, cielito lindo junto a la boca. No se lo des a nadie, cielito lindo que a mí me toca. Ay, 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 canta y no llore, porque cantando se alegran, cielito lindo, los corazones. Ay, 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 ay. canta y no llore, helps me connect to who I am and brings meaning to myself uh, and uh, helps me celebrate uh, my parents and my grandparents and all that they went through and all that they struggled with.
my great-grandmother was Indian, my, my great-grandfather was Spanish, and from them was born my grandmother, Mestiza, and from there my mother, and from there me. So three gener four generations back, you have them there. Life is passing, and uh, death is always with us. that's in pain, a community that's hurting. And so we need to recognize that when those, these types of murders and homicides and suicides affect our families. And so we start out serious. We start out hurting. We start out mourning and grieving as a community, the loss. And as we move through our procession, it's like moving through a person's life because we're gonna be remembering the beautiful things, the loving things, the wonderful things of those that we lost. And then we're gonna end up in celebration because it's also about celebrating. Tonight, we're gonna have Jay say a few words about her sister, and then we're gonna have them add some little crucificos, some crosses to Tomika's name. Tomika Coleman, Giselle the Great, was a lot of things, a teacher, a cook, confidant who loved a lot of people and was loved by many. That's what we want you to know about her. She was a lot of things and these papers don't even finish everything that she was. Jay, add on the crucifixes to Tomika's name. 